Hello guys, welcome to this master class. It is part of Plan Design for Chemical Engineers. It is an in-process booster program. And today I will share with you how to get field info and issue chemical process engineering deliverables. Before we start, you can join my Telegram channel in process. It is my free mentoring channel to guide you in chemical process engineering and plan design. You just need to click in the link in this video description and get exclusive content there and much more. My name is Jefferson Costa. I am a chemical process engineer with expertise in plan design and I have been working in proposals and engineering including basic detail design, commissioning startup, and I have been also working with plain troubleshooting. In 2018, I started sharing my expertise in plain design in LinkedIn, so I have many posts there, technical posts, talking about a lot of subjects related to plain design, like PNIDs, PFDs, and process safety, etc. And in the end of 2018, I start a Telegram group where I can be closer to my followers. So I share there more info that I don't share in another social media. And there are audios there, PDF files and other information exclusively for in-process members. And recently, I have been growing up my YouTube channel, and you can see other trainings there also related to hours with chemical process engineering and plan design. And I would like to share with you some of the projects that I participated, and one of them is a nitrogen plant in Brazil. I I worked not only in the startup in commissioning, but also during the proposal phase and basic and detailed engineering. And I did also the support, support the plant manager for during one year and uh, working with troubleshooting for this plant. The next photo is in a hydrogen plant in Brazil also where I participate in the commissioning startup and troubleshooting after operation. And there we had the support from American team that guide us and where I learned how to, to handle a hydrogen plant that works with SMR, steam methane reformer. And some years later, I was the leader of a startup team with more than 20 people, including Peruvians and Brazilian, American, and my friends from Moldavia also. It was a CO2 plant in Peru, and I also participate in the basic design, detailed design, and commissioning startup. And in the end of 2017, I left the company, however, six Months later, my boss asked me, invited me to go to the China to support a process team in the Shanghai office. So I expand, I expand around three months in Shanghai, supporting a process team, working a project for Samsung in Piontech. And I did the part of hydrogen filling and I also supported a nitrogen plant for them. So let's start this training and I would like to share with you first what is the, my goal here or the objective of this training is to help you understand how chemical process engineers start plan design. It is very important to you follow this class up to the end because it's very common we don't learn in the college or during the chemical engineering course what is really working with plan design. We learn a lot of theory in, during the course. We learn how to design some equipment also, but we are not challenged for understanding the whole process of plant design. And much or many students 
left the college without knowing how to start a plan design and that is the reason why some companies prefer to have experienced people instead of training younger engineers because it takes some time to to train a person and with this this class today or with this training it will help you to understand how how is the process of doing a plan design and i believe that it can help you during the job interview or if you are already in a company to develop faster your deliverables in the process team department every project should or starts with the kickoff meeting the objective of kickoff meeting is to share the scope the schedule and the cost of a project. It's depending on the phase that you are in the project, but in general, you will, in the, during the kickoff meeting, the leadership of the project manager, he or she will share with you the scope, the main reason why you are there, and the expectation for the schedule, and for the cost. This course today or this class today will not focus on schedule and cost and we will focus only the scope. And as part of my methodology to, to help you understand plan design, I start with a case study. So you will be introduced to a problem and based on that problem, we will start developing engineering deliverables uh, required for solving this, this scope. So the scope of the project is that we have a gas plant that wants to increase its processing capacity from 7,500 normal cubic meters to 10,000 normal cubic meters. This is the starting point for the chemical process engineers, but we need to collect more info in order that we are able to develop our process engineering documentation. So getting deeper in the case study, we have a gas plant that compress hot gas stream to further processing. To compress this, this gas, two blowers are used in parallel supplying 7,500 normal cubic meters of gas to the purification purification units and the composition of this gas in dry bases is 55% methane, 44% CO2 and 1% nitrogen and it is saturated with water. It means that depending on the temperature of the process we will have more or less water in the stream and we need to calculate that during the process simulation. Once we have a better understanding of the scope of the project, it's time to consult or review the available engineering documents that the plant has to us. And in this case, I didn't have the heating material balance of the plant this plant also didn't have a process flow diagram. My only reference for starting this project was the PNID, the human machine interface, and some documentations related to the equipment. We will start evaluating the PNID, and once we go further, you will have more details about this process. This is the PNID of the, this project. It is in AutoCAD Plan 3D. Here you can see the full document. And before we get in the details of the process, I would like to share with you that uh, engineering document always needs a stamp in the case of a drawing. So we have the stamp here identifying the type of the plant and what document it is. We have also the document number and the revision with the identification of the sheet and who draw this and the date of the, the issue. Let me show you 
this flag represents that the stream is going into the process. So we have the raw, raw gas here and we have temperature ele element that measures the temperature of the fluid. We have a pressure indicator transmitter and the pipe that fits the plant is a 20 inches BGPN 16201. The first information of the line numbering is the size of this pipeline and the second information is related to the fluid that is being received and the third information is related to the material of this piping and the last information in this case it is not only the order of the piping but also identifies the the area and as the the stream is saturated depending on the weather the temperature of the weather condensate may, may be formed during the transportation and we have a separated vessel with a drain valve automatic drain valve and the action of this valve is associated with level switches that we have in the separated vessel so in the lowest one is a level switch low level and we have two switches one one for low and other for high to open and close the automatic valve so in the in the lscl the command is to close the valve and as we have accumulation of liquid the liquid will reach the lsch and the command is to open the valve when we open the valve we start to decrease in the level of the separated vessel and when it reaches the lscl again the valve will close we have also another two switches here one is related to only alarm the liquid reach this level we the control room will have an alarm to know that the separator vessel is filling and we have a shutdown related to high high level so if we reach this lshh we have shutdown of the plant to prevent liquid come going to the blowers and this vessel should have a demister to prevent the the particles of liquid to go to the blower and because of that we have a pressure differential indication in the field to verify if this the mister is saturated and if the it is identified that the pressure is very high the it's time to shut down the plant and do maintenance in the demister in order to lower or decrease the pressure drop again and the gas goes out from the separator vessel and go to a header and this header feeds two blowers the blower 203 and 204 however during the design of the plant it was already considered the installation of two more blowers because we have already the pairs for that in the bottom of the blower we have a drain valve it is very important to to open this drain valve during maintenance and before starting the equipment again because you can accumulate condensate here and there is block valves in the upstream of the equipment and downstream of the equipment in order to be able to do maintenance while, while the other one is still running as it is a dynamic equipment it has vibration so to, to not propagate the vibration to the piping we have here jo uh, joint expansion this represents a joint expansion and we have equipments running in parallel so we need a check valve to prevent 
back flow from one blower from another. And once we have the gas compressed, it returns for a header of 20 inches and it goes to the treat treatment unit and we have a sample valve here, another pressure indicator transmitter and the temperature measurement again. Another info that we can identify in this PNID, it is the way that the blowers are controlled. So you can, can see here a VDF, it is in Portuguese, but it is a, a speed driver. It means that the rotation of the blower can be controlled. And based on the PIC 200A set point, if the suction pressure goes below the set point, we will send a signal for the blowers reduce their rotation. And once it, the, the blowers reduce their rotation, it will take less gas from the source. And in the other hand, if the suction pressure goes above the set point, the blowers will ramp up. And that means that it will increase the rotation and it will get more gas from the source. There are also a signal here from another part of the process and it means that there is a selector in this controller. It is not clear if we, what kind of selector it is, but for our scope of supply it doesn't matter. Observe also that we have a PSLL. It means if the suction pressure reaches minus 200 millibar G, the, the plant will shut down to prevent the air entrancy. So it is the main view or overview of the system based on the PNID. So you have seen that we got a lot of information only analyzing the PNID and every chemical process engineer should be or must be able to do that. This PNID is not drawn according to ESA standard, but it doesn't matter. Once you learn one kind of PNID, you will be able to read any other one. And we will return for the presentation. And now I will show you, I will present you the, the field information and we will be able to compare if the PNID really represents what is in the field. To avoid any misunderstanding during the project development, it is important to you talk with operations to confirm if the information that is available in the engineering drawings that represents the plants nowadays. Because sometimes in small companies, but it can happen in bigger bigger companies also, they have a documentation that represents the startup of the plant, but during the times, the operations or maintenance team do a lot of modification in the process, and as they don't have the culture of plant design, they don't upgrade the engineering documentation. So when you start a new project, it is very important to certify that what you have in your hand is true. And let's start in verifying the field information. So we can see that we have a piping going through a vessel separator. And in the top, there are a header. And we have piping going to one blower and we have isolation valve here and there, and the other the same, and we have a spare for two other blowers in the future, and you can see here a tap for the temperature, and there is also a tap for pressure, and the sample valve is also here, and interesting to note, I didn't comment during the PNID review, we have two kinds of material in this, in this system. 
we have a high density polyethylene here it's the black pipe and we have a stainless steel in the skid so let's return to the PNID to compare if everything is here so we return with the PNID here in a small screen to to help us to understand if everything is okay and before that I would like to to talk something I didn't talk before. So everything that is inside this limitation line is the scope of the supplier. And you can see also that we have a uh, piping with a uh, material PN16 and inside the skid we have another material, SS that is stainless steel and when we get out of the skid we have the A1 material so you can see that in the picture we have a uh, high density polyethylene material and in the skid we have the stainless steel and this, this kid the skid ends here and we have another material again and so the, the battery limit of this kit is this flange and we have a flange also behind the separator vessel we cannot see here but we will have a flange there also and observe that the spares in the PNID tells that we already have a junction expansion and a 12 inch valve this valve representation for this project is a butterfly valve and however in the field we don't have that we have only a spare with a blind flange and a tap for a drain and in the discharge we also don't have the isolation valve 12 inches isolation valve ne neither the expansion valve nor the check valve the check valve in the existing plant is this piece here you can see that it has a flange here and a flange here so it is the check valve however in the field we don't have those those information or those fittings piping fittings in the field so during our project development we need to appoint that and consider in the cost of the project and the last information that we will verify now is the human machine interface and here we have the the screen of the human machine interface in the control room and it is the representation of the process for the operators and he can control the plant using this screen and you can observe that is very similar with what is in the, the field so we have a, a measurement of the of the pressure we have a measurement of the inlet temperature also and it is the drain, automatic drain valve and we have the switches here and we have the two blowers with VFD and the set point for controlling the pressure in, in the suction of the machines is minus 81 millibar and in the discharge of the blowers we have the temperature measurement and also the pressure and we have also the indication of the flow measurement here we didn't saw the flow measurement in the field nor in the PNID because it is located in another position and it is in another sheet of the project but as we have here we will consider that during the development of our process flow diagram and as I told you before I didn't have a process flow diagram nor a heat material balance so the first step I developed a process flow diagram to represent what is in the field today and now you can see this process flow diagram so it is very simple it's a simplified flow it's a simplified process flow diagram 
you, where you can see the gas composition and the inlet pressure and temperature. You can see also the discharge, the discharge pressure and temperature and also the flow. And as I already told you, we need a stamp. This stamp is not filled in this case because I prepared only for this masterclass. And we have also the tags of the equipment. So you can see here the vessel separator tag, the blower's tag also, and the drain, automatic drain valve. And there is the information that the measurement is taking is taking downstream the flat tap and this is the information of the the motor size it is not uh, mandatory in process flow diagram however the company that i'm working on they like to have this information in the process flow diagram because it is easier to the electrical engineer to get this information from the drawing and now that we have the information from the field it's time to build our simulation in order that we can handle the process data to get what is the, the scope of the project that is the increasing of the processing capacity of this plant and there are a lot of software available for that and some of them is the ISPEN High Seas. There is also the Unisyn that is uh, uh, quite similar to ISPEN High Seas. And I, I'm working now with Symmetry from Slobegier. And there are many others like, like DWC and KenCAD and so on. And before recording this masterclass, I did a pool in my Telegram channel and and I do this frequently to know the to know the opinion of the members in order that I can do the best content for them. And I ask them what would be the best uh, process simulation or what the, the process simulation that they would like to know more about. And the result is here. The result is that 88% of people we should uh, prefer to know more about Aspen High Seas. So because of that, I decided to prepare this process simulation in high, Aspen High Seas so you can be familiar with Aspen High Seas. And now you can see what is the face of this process simulation based on all the information that we have seen up to now. And a information that you cannot see from the PNID nor the field or in the human machine interface is that the blower in fact has three stages. I verify that consulting the, the equipment data sheet. And now we have everything that we need to go further and start in developing our plan design. Up to this point, it was only gathering information and understanding the scope in order to do the real job that is increase the plant capacity. And just to remind you, we need to increase plant capacity from 7,500 normal cubic meter to 10,000 normal cubic meter. And to do that, we will run three blowers in parallel. Instead of having two, we will have three blowers in parallel. And now we will work together for develop the update of process flow diagram. And to do that, I need to update the simulation. And as the less deliverable for this masterclass, I will show you also how to issue the process data sheet for the equipment and the equipment in this case is the third biogas blower. It is our process flow diagram. I did it 
in Microsoft Visio. Microsoft Visio is not a free software, however, it is very intuitive, but you can use the Autodesk AutoCAD Plan 3D to do your process flow diagram, no problem. What we need to do to fill the process data sheet for the biogas blower and send that to the blower supplier is define the suction pressure, the discharge pressure, and also the flow and gas composition. The gas composition will remain the same in this case, and to simplify, we will not change the discharge pressure of the blower, and what we need to define is the flow that each equipment will handle, and the inlet pressure. First thing first, let's start to update our process flow diagram. Considering the new flow, the total flow for three blowers running in parallel, we don't know the new discharge temperature, so I will inform double X, and the gas composition is the same, the temperature will consider the same also. We don't know the discharge temperature. For this reason, right now, I will let just a double X. We need to, to review the document revision, so I will change the revision. It will be revision 1. And during the simulation, we will define what it will be the new inlet pressure. Right now, we don't know. And to add another blower in our system, I just go to pipelines. I will add another pipeline here. And I'll go in the equipment and select the same blower here. So, I will consider a new blower. Usually to identify a new scope, we can use bubbles to circumscribe the drawing, but in this case, I will only emphasize in red. So the first part of our job is done. And now what we need to calculate is the inlet pressure that we need to inform to biogas supplier. And to do that, I will use the ISPEN high seas. And once we update the simulation, we will return here to update the process flow diagram. This is, is our process simulation in, in ISPEN high seas. And first, I will add a third blower in the simulation. It will be the same from the existing one because this project has a peculiarity that we need to buy the same equipment because we already have the skid installed. And to install another equipment different than the existing one, we should have to do a lot of, of modification in the skid. So to prevent that, we will consider the same supplier of biogas blower and the same, the same model. So I will just copy the blower, one line of blower information, and tag that SP205. So first I prepare the T and the mix, and now I will add the pipings it is the same pipe, I mean it needs to have the same diameter to let the, the system uh, equal. Once I have the pipe in the simulation, I need to configure that and I will do a double click and there are two main information that I need to to add in the pipe segment. So the first one is add a pipe in the rating sizing 
option. I will use the same information for the other, the other pipes. And I need to fill also the heat transfer information. I will use the estimate HTC. So the Iceman High Seas calculate the heat transfer with the ambient to me. And just to remember that we are, this is not a grounded pipeline, it is above ground. So I will choose air as a medium. So we finish the inlet pipe for the blower. And first I will delete the flow information for the blower. And now I will split the flow to the three pipe segment. I just need to go in design parameters and now let's distribute the flow. I only need to inform two segments and the Iceman High Seas will calculate the last one. And now I will add the, the blower and the three stage of compression. Now that we have added the, the blower in the process simulation, it's time to do the configuration of the blower. And we will do that in the parameters. So it's a centrifugal blower. We will change the efficiency to let the efficiency equal for the existing one. However, the efficiency of the equipment is a uh, information from the biogas blower supplier, but we will consider consider a efficiency only for estimation. And what important for us is define or the discharge pressure or the pressure ratio. As we are considering the same equipment as the existing one, I will also we apply the, the same pressure rate that I have in the existing equipment. See that when we define the rate of pressure, the high seas calculates the dirt of the equipment based on the efficiency already informed. As efficiency decreases, the, the dirt for run or the power for the, the equipment increases. And we'll do that the same for the other two stages of compression. The temperature is a little bit different. In fact, I consider 70% efficiency as a diabetic. A diabetic and the 30 was with 71 so we need to update that and now i will add information for the pipe and you can see that the simulation convert converted because all equipment in all fittings in the screen is but we didn't finish our simulation because we need to update the flow and to do that I will use a manipulator because to have the 1000 normal cubic meter in the OSBL I need to to consider not only the dry gas, but also the moisture. Just so to not doing try and error, I will set the ESBL stream to reach the 1000 normal cubic meter. And let's say, see how we can do that. If you are not familiar with ESBL and OSBL, ESBL means inside battery limit and so what is at the right side of the SBL is our scope of supply so we are getting inside the plant 
that's why we use ES and the, the OS BL it's it's outside battery limit so what is at the right side of the OS BL it is what is going out from the the our school for, of supply or of our plant so that is to represent the better limits of our process simulation you can use other designation for that but what is important to us understand here is where begins our process simulation and where finish or where it ends so to add the monitor and the monitor will be the adjust and now we will set the adjust and the uh, target variable is the OSBL because it is the flow that we will want we want to increase and the adjusted variable is the ESBL because we will adjust the ESBL to reach the 10,000 normal cubic meter we can adjust also the tolerance so I will let one normal cubic meter and the step that will be 10 cubic meter each step and I will increase the maximum iteration to 1000 and let's see see that the molar flow is increasing and now we get it we have 10,000 normal cubic meter at the OSBL and to, to have that new flow uh, the inside battery limit has increased also and what is most, most important for us here is that the pressure the inlet pressure has decreased a lot and that happened because the source of this gas is is at zero bar g and we cannot increase that and when we get more flow through the pipe we increase the pressure drop and that pressure drop results in a in minus 161 millibar g before we update our process flow diagram i need to remind you that we kept the pressure rate uh, constant so we can verify that the temperature remains the same at the blower discharge and the discharge pressure decreases because as now we have a lower suction pressure with a constant pressure rate we will, we, will, we will have a lower discharge pressure in order to fix that we need to calculate the new pressure rate and set that in the blowers you can see the equation in the screen and the result of the calculation there the result is 1.12 so now I will change all the pressure ratio in the blowers and we will see the new result and now we have the pressure that we wanted at the battery limit and because of this increase in pressure we added around 10 grad celsius to the discharge pressure of the blower and now we can update the process flow diagram with this information and after that fill the process data sheet for the equipment 
And just to complete the process flow diagram, I will add the drain rate that we don't have right now, but I will add that to make it easier to uh, process engineer calculate the residence residence time of the the vest separate. And we are mo almost finishing. Here I have the process data sheet for equipment, the biogas blower. And this document is important because the mechanical engineer that do the specification for the equipment, he will not get the heating material balance to do the specification. It's not convenient to, to use the process flow diagram because uh, it can lead to misunderstanding. So the responsibility of the chemical process engineering is to deliver the right information for the equipment engineer in order that they can specify the equipment and send that to the supplier of uh, the procurement team. Your process data sheet don't, don't need to be like this that I'm, I'm using here. Uh, e usually it is a Excel spreadsheet, but in this case for this master class, I use this one to make it easier to us uh, discuss some, some topics here. In my documents, if it is not applied a stamp, I like to have a cover so that I, I can identify who did, who verified, and who approved the document. And I think that is very important to have an index of revision and the description also helps to identify what was changing, changed from a revision for another. And in this case, I have a summary, but usually process data sheet don't have that. And I have a description. And what is important and that I would like to share with you is that I get some information from the engineering memorandum that we didn't do in this master class. And here we have the, the process data sheet for the biogas blower, so we have the tag, we have the description, we have the type of equipment because we it is a blower, but if it was a compressor, it would be a centrifugal compressor or a positive displacement one. And we need to inform the gas composition. And here we will inform the new flow that is around Three thousand three hundred thirty-three normal cubic meter because we will split that on, on three, and the new suction pressure is minus one sixty one point seven. You will get those information from your process flow diagram. The suction temperature is will be the same and the discharge pressure will be the same also and we usually estimate the motor size so that the electrical engineer can do the previous calculation for their schematics and with that we finish the the deliverables that we need to do that was update process flow diagram update the simulation and issue the process data sheet for equipment. However, this is the document engineering documents that we consider for this master, master class. However, a real project, it is a real project for, for sure, but for to finish a project design or a plan design, we the chemical process engineer needs to handle much other documents. So we have here at least 12 documents to do that. And we didn't talk about the document list, timesheet control. We just handle the process for diagram. We, I mentioned to you the process design memorandum and to update the PNID 
we need the line list to fill the manual valve list and also the instrument list. There is the equipment list to, to fill also. And we just did two documents in 12 available in this list. Before I go, I would like to invite you to visit my website, jeffersoncosta.com. There you will find links for my other social media like YouTube, Telegram, LinkedIn, and also more information about chemical process engineering plant design in my blog. This is it for today. See you soon in another video.